All right, so for our first uh, day of class, for our first lecture, we're going to be talking about basic concepts of SEO. The very first thing that I want to do is go ahead and open up your web browser. We've got all the popular ones down here. Open whichever web browser you like. Let's go to google.com. So you might have heard about this little website named google.com. It's been around over 15 years now. It's, one of, it's actually the most trafficked website in the world. It gets the most hits every day. But, and it is the biggest search engine of all, but as I said, its market share is decreasing. We'll see why in a moment. Uh, this is the Google homepage. Every day they've got a little doodle, which is some sort of event or something that happens. I guess uh, 1896, that's the uh, 100 and whatever year anniversary of the first modern Olympics. Uh, but it's a search engine. It's become such the dominant search engine that it's become a verb, hasn't it? It's become genericized. When you don't know something, someone says, Google it. Basically, search online. It's a search engine to find websites, to find content online. It's so integrated also with web browsers nowadays that you think many people think they're the same thing. I'm in Google Chrome. I'm using the Google web browser, and I'm on the google.com website. But I can do this on Firefox, Safari, Chrome, Opera, Internet Explorer, Vivaldi, Arachne, etc., etc., etc. Many, many, many search engines, uh, many web browsers out there to browse the web. And here's Google, the search engine. And uh, as I said in this class, I'm going to be generic. I'm not going to say Google it. I'm not going to give preference to one or the other. I'm going to be generic and talk about search engines because we need to optimize for Google and Bing. But first with Google here, let's do this uh, first exercise where what you're going to do is search for yourself. Search for yourself as you are commonly known. So if your full name is uh, William Jefferson Clinton, you're going to search yourself for Bill Clinton. Search for yourself as you are commonly known or want to be known, your name on Google. My result is 25 million results found in almost a quarter of a second. I see a various pictures up on top. None of them are me. I see a nice call-out box on the side that focuses on a more famous Victor Campos, which is not me. I was not born in 1935. I am not an actor. I was not in Scarface. But the top text result here is me. This number one result of all the 25 million results is my LinkedIn profile right there. The second result is Internet Movie Database for the actor. That's not me. After that comes one of my websites, Victor Campos, my VM Campos site about me. So that's one of mine. Another result here that is me is my Rate My Professors profile. This is a very cool website for you to visit, ratemyprofessors.com. It allows you to look up instructors and the quality of the education and so forth. In case you're torn between taking one or two or three different classes, which one do I take, which instructor is the mean one, and which is the nice one, you can go here. So that, that result is mine. The next result is Facebook, which is not me. These are all the Victor Camposes on Facebook. There's a Victor Campos on YouTube, that's not mine. And there's another one there, that's not mine. Victor Campos Leal, Leal.com, that's not me. And then Victor Campos at brandyourself.com, that one is me. Make a note here the website, brandyourself.com. Let me get up my note over here. Brandyourself.com is one of many reputation management websites management sites reputation management sites brandyourself.com is one of them this might be useful to some of you and not for all of you uh, it's going to be useful for you if let's say you you know your name is your brand if i'm a web designer and I 
am putting myself forward as a web designer that I want to get hired as one. For me, it's valuable to, ra to manage my reputation online, that the most professional things appear when people search that name, so that they see the good stuff and not, you know, the party stuff. So reputation management sites do that. They help you show the best stuff about yourself and bury the not-so-good stuff. And these sites range between free and paid. Oftentimes they will have a free aspect that works really well, and then extra features are paid. How much? I don't know. Go to the website and look it up. But on brandyourself.com, this is one that I've used, and clearly the result is down there, because there are 10 slots on this results page. And I'm like on, what, four or five of them, or six of them. I'm taking up more of those slots away from the stuff that is not me. That actor's been around longer than me and been in a bunch of famous movies. But my results are appearing more than the actor. My content is appearing more often. And in my case, I want to show the best aspects of myself online when people search. So a reputation management site might be valuable. It might not be valuable for you if, let's say, you work at Qualcomm. You're one of the many employees at Qualcomm. You're not really the face of the company. You're just another great employee at Qualcomm. So it doesn't matter if your name and reputation is really at the forefront. They're going to be searching for Qualcomm rather than Victor Campos, who works at Qualcomm. So these management sites might not be valuable for everyone. Another one is known as, literally, reputation.com. That's another site where you can go there and build a good reputation online. I've also got about.me. These are three off the top of my head. There's plenty of others out there. And they all have these goal. You know, it's fascinating to think how so many new kinds of businesses have popped up with the with the perme with the permeation of the internet in our lives. Who would have thought that someone would have gotten an idea to make money off of putting your your name up online as the most positive result? But that's what these companies are, are about, putting your best foot forward for you. Um, so one of the slots that appeared here is that one. You can go research it on your own. I've used it. It has been valuable. And so we've got these 10 slots to fight for. And sometimes there's pictures and this sort of hero image, this sort of really standout image here. I want that. I want to appear here and all of that. That's what this class is all about. How do I get more hits or more fame or more traffic, more attention for my online presence? In my result, I also see, perhaps you meant Victor Campos, the actor, the attorney, the doctor, the DJ, the DJ doctor, etc. And then a bunch of results at the bottom here, a bunch of pages. And again, we've got all of these results, less people go to page two, less people go to page three, and even less on and on and on. So the goal of SEO is to rank well on the first page. And it may be easier for some of us more than others. There might be too much competition. Let's do the same search. But now I'm going to open a different web browser. You can open another window or tab or just go to a different web browser. I'm going to open another web browser. And I will do the same search, but now I will do it in bing.com. So I'm going to open another browser and go to bing.com, b-i-n-g.com. Bing is another search engine. Its purpose is to help you find results online, because I don't use the phone book anymore. I'm online finding stuff. Google is the big one. Bing is the second biggest one, and increasing in market share. Bing's home page visually is very different, but functionally exactly the same. Visually, Bing often has a nice, big, interesting graphic in the background, and they're also talking about the 100 and uh, what is it, 120 year anniversary of the first modern Olympics. Here's a shot of the actual first Olympics in Athens. Then they've also got headlines down here that might be interesting to uh, interesting to look at. 
but functionally it's still a search engine. There's still a big box right there, search. Let's search for ourselves the same way we search for ourselves on Google. So I'm starting to type. What's that? Type bing.com. So here I'm going to be searching and it might be giving me recommendations. I'm going to ignore those. Just go ahead and search your name the same way that you searched on Google. Excuse me. But it was still Google Chrome. Yeah, you can use any web browser to browse any website. It's like using any car to drive a road. It's the same i5, but I can drive it in my Ferrari. Internet Explorer is different from Google Chrome. Yeah. It does. Bing is the search engine which comes from the big company Microsoft. So yes, each one has its own thing, but you can use any web browser to browse any website or use any search engine. But you don't have a Bing, Microsoft, Bing, all this internet? Yes, you open your web browser and you go to bing.com, Internet Explorer. So if we search here on Bing for the same name, I get similar results, visually very similar. Uh, I see those pictures again, slightly different. I see this call-out box on the side, slightly different, but it's still focusing on the actor. I see the number one top result is the actor, whereas my result is second place this time on Bing, LinkedIn. And then it goes on to say some more LinkedIn results, Facebook, those aren't mine then the celebrity, and then the actor, and then the Facebook stuff. There's really only one result that is me on Bing. Now I do see over here on the side, there's me right there. I do see myself in that way that stands out in Bing than on, than on Google. There's no picture of me here on, on Google. There's a lot of text results of me. But over here there's one text result of myself, but my picture is there and that might catch people's attention and say, oh, that's the victory I'm looking for, and then they would click. So now let me ask you, when you searched on Google, how many of you found something here you weren't expecting? <coughs> okay. How many of you, when you searched on Bing, did you find something you weren't expecting? How many of you found something on, on Bing that you didn't see on Google? So very small sample size, of course, but look at that. Different results. There are two search engines that have the same goal, to find the best results when someone searches. They're both browsing the same internet, the same web full of billions of websites, but each one has its own algorithm, its own technique that it believes gives you the best results. The Google algorithm believed that within the 25 million results here, you're going to find the perfect results for Victor. And Bing believed that in these 4 million results, you're going to find the best victor. They're both browsing the same internet, but the algorithm is different. And they're both right and they're both wrong. It just depends on what you're looking for. Did you find your results? Now you might say, okay, Google is the big famous one. He said it had 65% market share. Everyone knows that it's a, it's a verb. Why would I bother with anything else like Bing? As I said, Bing is increasing in market share for these various reasons. If you go out and you're going to buy a brand new computer, you're not going to get a Mac, let's say. Let's say you're going to get a Windows computer. Windows is made from which company? Microsoft. Microsoft makes Bing. Microsoft is going to put by default Bing search on your computer, not Google search. It stands to reason because it's one company favoring its product. You might say, that's terrible. What can I do about it? We'll just switch to Google. No problem. You can get away from Bing and use Google like millions of people do. But by default, you're going to see Bing on a brand new Windows computer, which are the dominant kind of computer sold. Macs are very famous and popular, but Windows computers are still like 80% market share. Question? Yeah, this is the problem. Your, your social media is the market. Your social media is the market. It's just part two. Mm -hmm. 
Does that make any difference if you do part one? Nope, you can come on into the part two without doing part one. Um, you can still, uh, it's, it's not a requirement. It's just that there's so much to learn, part two starts, and you'll be fine if you don't take part one. Thank you. So if you're going to get a brand new Windows computer, you're going to get Bing search built in, which you can change, of course. And actually, Google begs you to change it, that as soon as you log in and it recognizes you're not using Google by default, it'll say, wouldn't you love to activate Google? Many people will. Many people won't. But by default, uh, Windows computers have Bing search built in. Now, let's say you've got an iPhone. For years, the iPhone, Apple, had a contract with Google. So when you do a search on iPhones, when you ask Siri, it does a Google search. Guess what? That contract expired. And guess where Apple went with if it didn't go with Google after the contract ended? Bing. So it's going to give you results there also of Bing, which you can change. Of course, you can go to your settings and go activate Yahoo or go back to Google, whatever. But more and more companies are partnering up with Bing because Google is becoming the big one, the 800-pound gorilla, the bull in the china shop, the monopoly. And so when it's the big one and it can dictate, okay, everyone, if you're going to use our search engine, you're going to pay us 25 cents per search. And Bing is going to say, hey, everyone, you can pay us 5 cents per search. So just economically, it might make better sense for people to use Bing. <coughs> Now, again, I'm not saying Bing will probably take over Google. I don't think anything will, but it behooves us to be optimizing for both search engines. My friend has a Prius, and she's got a cool little touch panel in the center dashboard, and I was playing with it the other day, and they had a little search box, and I click search, and it says powered by Bing. So her car has a search feature, and it's powered by Bing. So that's why we're going to be addressing both Google and Bing. Let's go back to Google. This time, let's do a search on Google for the name of your company, if you've got a company. If you don't have a company, search anything else, or my company, let's say. I'm going to search for the name of my company as it is normally spelled, as it is on the business card, you know, not the website, but the name of my company. I'm going to search the name of my company as my company is known. I'm going to search my company or your company in Google first. And here we go. Results number one. My company, PM Interactive. I have perfect SEO, don't I? This is a trick. This is a trick question. This is a trick question. I am number one on the first page of results, but it's a trick question because obviously I'm searching for the name of my company, as the name of my company in Google. Uh, we'll talk about this soon, but really we want to be searching for like the topic of my site. We'll we'll get to that later. The point of this is to show you the aspect of SEM search engine marketing, not only SEO, what you do on your website, but SEM, what you do outside of your website, what do you do besides your website. Let's see my results here. Number one is, is our website with a last updated date, January 14th. Yours may or may not show up, yours may or may not have a date here, but one of the things that we'll make a note of, we will say here, um, SEO signals. That's the fancy way of what are the little things, what are all the little things that the search engines, Google and Bing, what are the, what's the algorithm looking for to rank you better? Signals, the SEO signals. One of them, one of many, is how recent is your site? If you created a site and your competitor a year ago, if you both created a site, you're both realtors, a year ago. You both have a website. But your competitor has been updating it on a regular basis, at least more often than you. They might rank better than you because the search engines want to show content that is most recent and relevant to people. Yes, there's evergreen content and all of that, which we'll talk about later. But one of the many signals that the search engine will look at is how new is your website? How updated has it been? 
and we'll talk about the nuances because I know you're dying to ask me how often should I update it. I'll talk about the nuances as we go on. But here, Google is showing this was updated January. There's our Facebook, there's our Yelp, there's our Google app, our Android app, there's our LinkedIn, there's our Twitter, there's our YouTube, something called alignable.com, I don't know what that is, that one's new to me. There's our Pinterest. So look at everywhere else. Look at what else Google sees besides the website. Look at all of these things where people could possibly find us. Because the funny thing about SEO is that traffic breeds traffic. Popularity breeds popularity. It's, you know, it's a catch-22, which came first, the chicken or the egg. Well, I want more traffic to my site. No problem. The search engines will give you more traffic to your site. But I need to rank on the search engines. No problem. You'll rank with more traffic. But I need more traffic to rank. So it keeps being a circular logic. And the way you break out of that is the more you follow the rules of what we'll talk about in this class, such as being on websites besides your own website. That helps. It's one of the signals as well. How recent is your site? Where else do you also exist besides your website? That's the default now. You have a website. You need a website. That's the default. The question was, do you have a website? Now that's the default. The question now is, what's your Facebook? What's your Instagram? Do you have a blog? Do you have a mailing list? All of these details we'll talk about. Well, what else are you doing besides your website? Because that just basically comes back down to the biggest signal of all content. What is the content that you are creating and putting out to the world for the search engines to find so that people can see you, can find you? I'm a realtor. I want to get hired to sell a house or to buy a house. I want people to search, you know, realtors in, in Chula Vista. That might be hard for me to get ranked by. There's many realtors in Chula Vista. But what if someone is searching for affordable realtors for, for first-time homeowners? That specific phrase there, what if that phrase is part of the content of my site? What if I've got that on my site, this phrase that someone searched for? What you got in your URL? That's not enough. Not only in your address, but in other places throughout your site, as we'll talk about. So the content the terms, the keywords, the phrases people are searching for. We'll see these details. Content. So you can see, follow us on Facebook. We're posting stuff about web design. Rank us or rate us on Yelp if you're happy with our results. What Download our... That's just the initials of the founder of the company because what's in a name, we'll see that really the name of your company isn't as valuable as it used to be. Any name for a company really will work nowadays as long as you address all of the aspects of SEO. In the old days, I needed to have SanDiegoPlumbing.com. I'd pay $2,000 for that domain name. Nowadays, save your money. Save that money and instead in invest it in SEO and SEM. Because any name nowadays really will work as long as you engage in the rest of SEO. So our app, our YouTube, our Twitter, all of this stuff besides the website. Where else do you exist on your website? On exist, I want to say here, social media. Blogging. email, marketing, etc. This is really where the core hops and bangers start and not get a system. Suppose you want to say something like uh, Google Affiliates. Is that, is that permissible? Well, that sounds like two different questions. If you're going to borrow other people's content, I highly recommend you don't not, not do it. Not the content, but just, you know, just the URL, the URL part. If you want to make an URL, you want to say something like Google Affiliates. Or Udemy Affiliates. Is that okay? Can you get all of that? 
Well, in the actual address, that's not so bad. No, if you put those sorts of keywords and such in the address, that's not so bad. But if you were saying about their stuff on your website, you don't want to do that. So, make a note here, and this doesn't apply to everyone, but it's more and more valuable to everyone. Ranking websites, review websites, testimonial websites. Uh, so I'll call them testimonial websites. Like Yelp. These websites where people can give you star ratings and comments, good and bad. These places are also becoming social SEO signals. The search engines are running 24 hours a day scanning all the corners of the internet and therefore if we exist on as many places as possible that will help us our content will be found in more places when someone searches and nowadays you probably do this yourself if you want to go to a brand new restaurant you're probably not gonna drive around the city till you find one you're probably gonna go online and search maybe either on Google or Bing or directly on Yelp maybe you've got the Yelp app and you search Italian food restaurants in my location and it'll give you a bunch of results I'm not even on Google there I'm not even on Bing I'm on Yelp search and so testimonial sites are getting more and more valuable they don't apply to everyone but notice our company is a web design company we have a service Yelp is often known for restaurants and hotels and that sort of thing, but it applies to everything. Lawyers, web design companies, dog walkers, bakeries, everything. And you may have not created a Yelp profile, but someone might have for you to give you that bad review. And you didn't even know you have it. You don't even know you've got bad reviews on Yelp because you thought, oh, I'm not going to create my Yelp. I'm safe. No, anyone can create a Yelp and give you reviews, good and bad. Yes. Is your um, the blogging that you do for your company is that uh, do you have that set up as a link onto your main site or is your site just a WordPress site with a you can um, you can do it any way you want um, you can have your you can have your blog off on a blog website and then your main website and link the two sure. Mm -hmm. I recommend though you do have the blog right on your website that way people get give you traffic to your article which is on your website which is giving you traffic to your website if you wrote your blog articles on somewhere else like on a LinkedIn blog Facebook blog blogger blog you're getting traffic over there and unless you're bringing that traffic back to your main website it's not helping you as much as, as it could so with WordPress you can build your blog right into yes website. WordPress is very powerful it can make very it can make static basic uh, business card type of websites, it can make blog kinds of websites, it can make hybrid websites that incorporate all of that and I recommend put your blog on your own website and you can do that with WordPress, with Wix, with Squarespace, with all of them. And your email marketing using something like MailChimp? MailChimp, Constant Contact, etc. Yeah. So you put links in your emails? Yeah, think about the emails that you get if you subscribe to any of these email newsletters. I get the Fry's newsletter every week, and every week I'm tempted to buy something because I love the stuff at Fry's. That's an email newsletter right there, marketing. I'm getting in this email, and it has a link. Click here to get the latest 10% off on that hard drive. So it's just basically... Say that again? Yeah, the search engines will, will see that too. They'll see traffic and, and hits and such from email as well. So the more of these things that you engage in, the better for you. Yes? Part of what you're doing is trying to engage the reputation of your site. So if more people are linking to it, you get a higher reputation because of their algorithm. So getting back to these testimonials, Yelp is a big one. Uh, there's other ones. There's TripAdvisor. This one is uh, this one is a bit more focused on restaurants and hotels and such. So TripAdvisor doesn't apply to everyone, but the purpose of it is that you know someone is in uh, uh, someone is in Seattle and, and suffering yet another rainy day, and they want to come to San Diego to enjoy our sunshine, and they want to know 
uh, what's good in San Diego, they can get on TripAdvisor, and this is, you know, travelers writing reviews for travelers. TripAdvisor, that's another testimonial site. There's also uh, angieslist.com. That's more for writing reviews and testimonials, oftentimes for like services like contractors, roofers, um, you know, uh, gardeners, people that do some kind of service, electricians. So Angie's List is a place for reviews. And uh, kudzu.com, that one's also related to it. So the more of these sites that are relevant to you, to your business, that you exist on, the more the search engines can find you and see, well, this uh, web design company has a nice website, and so does this one, but this one is ranked on, on Yelp and has a review on Kudzu, and this one over here doesn't. So we might rank these other guys better that have more testimonials, more authority, more, more fame. So it is a cycle. More uh, fame breeds more fame. Traffic breeds more traffic. I'm going to do the same search now over on Bing, just to compare. I did this Google search. It gave me 285,000 results. So that doesn't really mean that there's 285,000 pieces of info of my company all over the Internet. This, that number is honestly inflated. But uh, it found a lot of stuff about my company on Google. I want to compare that with Bing. Search for the name of your company again in Bing. Bing says that uh, you'll find your perfect results in one of these 500, uh, 15,000 possible hits. So again, they're both searching the same internet, but the algorithm of each believes that theirs is the best, and they're both right and they're both wrong. They're both right if you get the results that you're looking for, and they're both wrong if they don't, if you don't. So top result is here also our company, but notice very slightly this font is bigger and bolder and more important looking than these ones over here. <clears throat> uh, Bing is also changing the results page to sort of really help you as a, as a business because look at this, it also showed a map to our location, and there's our Yelp reviews nicely laid out with the testimonials and the nice comments. Uh, Google isn't doing that in my case. As a matter of fact, Google nowadays has removed their sidebar over here. There's these subtle things. Did you notice Google doesn't show numbers here anymore? It used to show numbers. It doesn't show numbers anymore. Google also used to show a sidebar here of results. Often there were ads. But now it doesn't show a sidebar. This looks kind of weird and empty now. Bing is using the sidebar still to really show off this company at least and other things. Bing is showing here also deep links. Our website is here, and these are links in our website on the on the deeper uh, deeper addresses into our website. I want that. We'll be able to do this, but. Bing is helping here, because what if I want to go directly to request a quote? I heard so much about PM Interactive, I want to go request a quote. Google isn't doing us those favors, and none of these results here, I'm going to tell you, have been paid for at all. These, this is all organic SEO. This is non-paid SEO. Let me take a quick sidebar for this. Let me back up to the very top here. We've got organic SEO, and we've got PPC. This is non-paid efforts to rank well for the search engines. Search engine results page, the SERPs. And then PPC, paid efforts. So both of these are good. Both of these are effective. None of these are cheating. Sometimes people think PPC, pay for it. I'm going to pay for this and get higher. Um, it's, it's not a bad thing, especially if you're starting off. If, you, if you're yet another organic vegan bakery and there's one down the street and you want to rank higher than them, it's not a bad idea. It's not cheating to pay. You might think, well, uh, that goes against 
my, my morals. Why would I pay for this? Um, it is valuable. We do do it. We do both for companies. We do the paid stuff. We do the organic stuff. The organic stuff could give you a better foundation in the long term, but it takes more time and effort. PPC, the paying, pay-per-click. That's what PPC is, pay-per-click. Paying for it could give you great results early on, but again, if you stop paying for it, eventually you start to go back down again because you're no longer paying. Question? No, I was just saying, I think a reputable company can check their Yelp reviews because there are some that can get you blocked out of Google. Because hmm. they do abuse it, so. <laughs> so, the... I think that you have to decide which of those two do you want to engage in, and you could do both. You could um, do a little bit of a budget of $20, $5, $100. You could, do, you could put your budget in there. You know, If you're thinking about the money that you spend on that latte every day, add that up and then use it instead for some, for some quick SEO results by paying for it. And again, in this class, we're not going to really talk a lot about it. That's a whole nother beast. We're going to be talking about the, the free stuff in this class. Now, going back to my results here again, this, this looks like better, nicer results that, it, that is enticing me to click. Uh, they're both uh, trying to show results that they feel are the best. I'm seeing here also the same YouTube and LinkedIn and so forth. But notice on, on, on YouTube it shows here some stats, 109 subscribers. Uh, there's 109 subscribers with how many views and such. Down here there's also the Google Plus result. I didn't see Google Plus on Google itself. Um, then there's other ones. So out of the 10 slots here, actually two of them are not even our company. We are not publicly traded company. We can't buy stock in our company and all of that. So these two results did get taken by some other companies that perhaps are bigger. But notice the, the majority of results are our company. And outside of the website, the Facebook, the LinkedIn, the Google+, the YouTube, the Yelp. So that's why, again, to remind you, uh, social media. And I teach the social media class this Friday, 9.30, 9.15 a.m. is the first day. It is part two of the class, but you didn't need to take part one for part two. In that class, once per day, I cover one network. Last month, part one, day one, we covered Twitter, then we covered Google+, then Facebook, then Pinterest. We focus on one network per day, a big overview. This month, on our four days, we're going to cover LinkedIn, then uh, Instagram, and then two days on YouTube. YouTube is very valuable nowadays because what you do on YouTube is you share. You might not think of it as a social network, but it's a big social network. It's a big search engine, and you get a lot of traffic from it. But what you do on YouTube is you share videos. So we spend one day this month, if you take the social media class, creating a video learning how to make a video, and then the second day is uploading it to YouTube and optimizing for it and all of that stuff. So that's this month, this Friday, day one. Thank you for that information. That's You're welcome. Now, as I said, this kind of search is, uh, is a trick question because if a person knows your the name of your company, obviously they'll appear here. People are really not going to search for you this way. They're going to search for you via keywords. So let's go back to Google. And first we're going to do a keyword search here, a basic keyword search. And what I mean here is one of the things that my company does is web design. I'm going to go back to Google and search web design. I'm not going to get fancy any other way if you know other tricks and all of that. Don't do those yet. Don't put a location, don't put a zip code, just put a very generic keyword. I'll explain why in a moment, of course. Let's do, oops, not web advisor, web design. Let's do a, a search for the keyword, one keyword. Uh, one keyword for what your company is about. Don't worry about other special tricks about zip codes and all of that. Just put a basic term. 
And it doesn't have to be literally one word. It can be like this. Web design is two words. I'm searching for it like a real thing. This is one of the keywords, is one of the topics that my business is about. We do web design. I search web design in Google and I get 19 million results. I do a quick scan of these results. I don't see my company. That's okay. This is what I'm getting at, that this is the kind of search that people are doing. They're not going to search probably for your name unless, again, your name is part of the brand. They're not going to search for the name of your company. They don't know you exist. They're going to search for keywords of things that they're looking for. And on this, on this search result here, at the very top, I get mopro.com. They're number one, page one. They Therefore, true or false, they are the best result. <clears throat> false. Why? It's a paid ad. It's clearly marked as an ad here. They engaged in PPC. They paid to be number one. Okay, so did these guys, goldenseller.com, and so does top10webbuilders.com. Skipping the ads, the very first organic result, 95 inspiring websites of web design agencies. Okay, the first result, real result, is not even a real company. It's an article. It's like a ranking article about 95 inspiring web design agencies. I don't care about that. I want to hire someone to do my website. So that, for me, let's say I'm a person that wants a website, so I search web design. I'm not getting any good results so far. The next result is something called Behance. I've never heard of Behance, but that's not what I'm looking for. This is web design projects on Behance. Projects from the latest top online portfolio. That's okay. no, not what I'm looking for either. The best designs.com. Web design inspiration, the best web design, web design inspiration updated regularly with you. That's just inspiration. I'm looking for a real company. Siteinspired.com. Again, I'm getting all of these results and then teach yourself web design and web design gallery inspiration and the Wikipedia article. This result that I did here with this kind of generic keyword used to be what we wanted to do when we wanted to optimize our website. We wanted to find these keywords and then apply the keywords to our website. We wanted to take web design and we wanted to put web design in the address, in the URL of my, web, of my website. I wanted victorwebdesign.com and I wanted to put web design like on the home page in big bold letters of the home page and I wanted to put web design in the text here and I wanted to put web design everywhere I wanted to use that keyword web design all over the place and in the old days that technique worked when the web was smaller when there were less websites the search engines had to figure out Yahoo had to figure out back in the old days how do we show results when people are searching for web design? Well, this website has said the keyword web design ten times on their site, and this one has only used it seven times. So let's put these guys higher than these guys, because obviously they know what they're doing. They've got more of that keyword. That was the old way. Using these basic keywords throughout our site was the old way. And nowadays, that really is not that helpful anymore. It might even be hurtful. It might even hurt you to use these basic keywords, this basic keyword strategy. Because if I can do it, so can the spammers, so can the hackers, so can the, so can the uh, scammers. All of these companies that are out there selling terrible products or putting viruses out on websites and stealing your credit cards, they would do this. They would put those keywords. They would put in so many keywords that were not related because the search engines would analyze the site and then rank them. So on our notes here, old method, basic keywords, avoid. New method, long tail keywords, use. And of course I'll explain this soon. 
but we're doing a basic keyword search here, which used to work, which doesn't anymore. If you take this class for four weeks, and like I said, this is complicated, not difficult. And let's say you have your business to run. You are the head of your business, and you've got to do payroll, and you've got to hire, and now you've also got to do SEO, which, incor which incorporates editing your site and getting on Twitter and doing blogs. I'm busy running my business. I'm going to hire someone. Great. Hopefully, what you've learned in this class helps you hire a good, reputable SEO company. But if that company right away starts to talk about, we need to put your keywords in your address, and we need to buy a brand new web address called you know, amazing, uh, uh, you know, San Diego Realtor Eastlake.com. They're using the old the old ways, the ways have been dis that have been discounted and abused. That the search engines are no longer liking, and unfortunately, nowadays the search engines operate under guilty until proven innocent. Shoot first, ask questions later. If it quacks like a duck, and it walks like a duck, it's a spammer duck. <laughs> so that means that if you do techniques that are bad nowadays, the search engines will think you're a spammer. Now I trust you, you're not a spammer, but Google won't, Bing won't, Yahoo won't. And if it sees that you're using these bad techniques, it'll say this is a bad website. And it might be very hard to get out of that hole of negative SEO. So this class will be talking about all the newest techniques, the best techniques, the ones that uh, that, that work, that the search engines recommend. And so the old techniques, those are called black hat techniques, black hat SEO. Old, outdated, bad techniques. The good ones are white hat SEO. The new ones are modern, what they recommend. And these names come from uh, like the old cowboy movies, when the uh, when the when the bad guys came into town and shot up the place and took over. What kind of hat were they wearing? Black hat. Black hat. And when the sheriff came to clean up the town, what kind of hat was he wearing? White, White hat. And yes, there is a gray hat in the middle, and that's in the middle. The white hat ones are the newest techniques, best practice techniques. Very soon. The gray hat techniques are in the middle and they might not have been discounted, they might not have been outdated yet. Uh, in this class we're really going to focus of course on white hat techniques. And I might mention black hat, gray hat here and there and basically to say to avoid them. And so that is uh, what I'm saying here, simply focusing on basic keywords doesn't work anymore. You can compare that basic keyword search with Bing and you should just be getting a sense of the, of the differences between the two search engines. Here it's also got ads and organic results and pay and PPC results and such web web design. Why did I search for that? Web design. You're gonna see these results and you may get mostly ads, you may get some articles, you may get some real results. But that's what the purpose of SEO is, to rank well on the first page of results. Yes? There's a trend that you see it more on the big here of hiding what is uh, an ad. They used to be in yellow blocks, things like that. Yeah, and so I'm so seeing here, ad there. If, you can, if, you, if you look carefully, you'll see here, they're not making it that obvious on Bing that this is an ad. It is marked as an ad, but it's not really, it doesn't really stand out. So for good or for bad, on Bing I do see the sidebar there, more places to pay for placement. Bing is, uh, Google has taken that away. But really the organic results are still full of like articles and news things and tutorials and such. Really here, this result, jacobtyler.com, is lost in all of the results. 
So what I'm getting at here is that it might be difficult to rank for certain keywords because of the competition. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about then the long tail keyword strategy because this method right here doesn't work anymore. Basic keywords. We need to talk about the long tail keyword strategy. So it's 2.01. We'll take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 2.11 and we'll go on.